Now look at this scramble. You're looking at Marlon fifth, Michael Waltrip six, Hot Strickland right back on the inside in seventh. I tell you, you know, uh, they're, they're, they have a heck of a battle going. It's uh, went think, on for a lot of laps. I think they've left race from lap one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I think so. They're still digging, man. They're still digging. And yeah, one will lead a while, then the other will lead a while. Sometimes uh, people always say, well, why do you guys keep passing each other? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, we want to win, but, you know, I mean, you're passing the same guys, and pretty soon you slow down and the next guy passes you, and it's because we're competitive, and uh, we want to beat each other. Morgan Shepard being lapped by Bobby Lavati, who's never won a race. Super Bowl winning Joe Gibbs is with him. He's going just the way he likes, and he wants to do even more. You know, to finish second twice is great. You know, it's just, you know, you know, get a little luck on our side, get a little luck here and there, and, you know, we'll, ha we'll have a better day than a second place. And you never know, that might that day might be around the quarter, might be a long ways away, but we're, we'll just keep, just keep the hammer on them. 500 miles he's been hammering, and there's Joe Gibbs looking on as his choice after he lost Dale Jarrett to take over this car, now is in command of the Coca-Cola 600 and seeking his first Winston Cup win. Looking into the Charlotte Motor Speedway from the steel aerial cam with 373 of 400 laps complete. The last time we had brothers one and two in the 600, 1971, Bobby and Donnie Allison. And that's what it's shaping up for right now. But there's others out here that can change this story, and Dick Bergeron has more. Fuel is the story on pit road, Ken Squire. When Earnhardt came in, it was on lap 329. Recall he is going to have to stop with five to go for a gas and go. Not so for Terry Labonte, who made it all the way to 334. His crew chief, Gary Dehart, says, they can go all the way. They won't have to stop. Now, there's a caution. All this goes down the drain, and we start all over again. But if there is not, fuel could play a major role in the outcome of this event. And again, let's review as far as Bobby Labonte's concerned, Ernie. I think what they said, uh, Bobby Labonte's crew chief told us that uh, he could go all the way, too. So um, the first and second cars say they can go all the way. Yeah, I think they, they stretched it all along to try to do that. And, uh, Somehow, the other Earnhardt just didn't have it to stretch, and uh, they were able to stretch it right now. So it's looking good for them right now, but we just have to wait and see. Dale Jarrett's Haviland Texaco car has gone behind the wall. It is out of the race. The attrition continuing to build with Bobby and Terry Labonte, one and two, Earnhardt three, Ricky Rudd four, Marlin in fifth, and that battle continues with Michael Waltrip in six and Lake Speed right there in seventh. The lap down in eight is Bobby Hamilton followed by Rick Mast and Ricky Craven stays 10th with the Hutt Strickland a couple of laps down in 12th Dick Trickle 13th Steve Grissom 14th Musgrave 15th and they'll give you more on the uh, rundown here in the top of your screen but what a story being written up front by the Lavani brothers is there a replay of 71 when Bobby and Donnie came home one and two well it's still over six seconds by which Bobby Lavani is staying out in front of the interstate battery Joe Gibbs car. There's going to no, be a lot of mix up on back down down in the, the top 10 or 12 because some of them are going to stop some of them are not. So uh, that, that's going to really mix it up down there. But the front ones look like they're pretty well set. Richard Randy Pemberton can give us more on some of the cars that cannot make it the distance without a fuel stop. Randy? Yeah, can uh, fifth through seventh. The four car of Sterling Marlin, they've radioed to him. They're not sure. They said Sterling conserved fuel. However, you do that. And if you go back to Michael Waltrip in sixth, they said you cannot make it. The nine car of Lake Speed, they told him, I believe you'll be four laps short. So that's the way those cars stack up. The 43 car is running eight. Putting a lap on Randy LaJoy is the leader seeking that first Winston Cup win in the car that won the 500 here last October with Dale Jarrett at the controls. We'll be back for the finish after we take this break. For Speedway with Richard Petty and Ernie Irvin, I'm Ken Squire, topside. And we're going to be with you right to the finish now, following Bobby Labonte in his quest for his first Winston Cup victory. Now, second place is a long way back. And it's someone he knows well. Six seconds back is Terry Labonte. Years ago, he was asked by the press what he would change about himself.
himself. He said he'd like to be more like his brother Terry. Well, his brother Terry is a former Winston Cup champion, and I know that's what Bobby Labonte has in mind. A big step tonight if he can do what Jeff Gordon did and introduce himself to victory lane on the Winston Cup circuit right here in the Coca-Cola 600. Here's Bobby Labonte. And for Joe Gibbs, it'll be his second straight trip there. They pulled it off last October with Dale Jarrett. As we mentioned Dale Jarrett is now retired. There's Joe Gibbs looking pensive, looking on. There's a guy that loves the sport, huh, Ernie? I tell you, he loves the sport. He, he loves to win. And, um, you know, most all parts of um, sports, whether it's football, drag racing, or Winston Cup racing, um, they're, they're able to uh, put together winners. Bobby Hamilton is now on pit road for his final stop. He's running in eighth position, one lap down in the petty car, number 43. How did that pit stop look, Richard? I don't know. I missed it. I was busy watching it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. That was a good stop, but they just had to put in one can of gas. And, and the deal is the reason they changed tires, they can change tires as quick as you can put in one can of gas. So he doesn't lose anything by changing tires. It just makes it that much safer when he wants to get back out there. Looks like we're on our way to a record. Hey, don't you love that camera up on top of the 43 car? That really shows your racing like in, that's amazing, that job. Yeah, when you got a, a deal like it, you get the panoramic view of everything. You can just sort of see everything. Now, when you're out there driving that car, it's more like you're in with binders on this car. Yeah, you, you get tumbly. And, and somebody was asking me the other night about the difference in running during the day and running at night. And I think it gives you even more tunnel vision at night. It's not that you ever pay any attention to the grandstand or the infield during the day, but it's there. It's, it's, it's in the corner of the eye. And this way, all you see is that black strip in front of you. So, but really, I think you probably pay more attention when it's when it is dark or when it is lit than you do any other time because you don't you don't get distracted any at all. 120,000 people on the edge of their seats here. Another 40 or 50,000 at least in the infield. Watching as Bobby Labonte closes down. We're going to stay with you right to the finish, unless there's a caution. Keith Craven has fallen back some, but he still, as far as his speed is concerned, but still stays ninth. Robert Presley has come back on the track in that rookie battle. Craven is still in 10th. Remember, Presley was brought in early, and he has fallen back considerably. So that point battle will change. Ricky Craven now making his final pit stop. They're going to just gas and go. 389. That's what the, the one car did. They're, they're all kind of racing um, with with Richard's car. And, uh, Richard's car, they put two tires on and a whole gain of gas. The other guys were just putting in a couple, three seconds worth of gas, just enough to make it to the end. Presley back in 25th. Craven comes out. We're showing 10 to go. Getting down to the final 10 laps. 10 more laps. Boy. I tell you, you know, I've won my first Winston Cup race at, uh, at Bristol, and I tell you, when the, when the last 10 laps come, I mean, it's like unbelievable in what you feel. And I know Bobby Labonte right now is um, just, he's, he's hearing things, feeling things, and um, his whole life is wanting to be a Winston Cup uh, driver, and um, now when, when you succeed, that's the best feeling in the world. See, this is where Jeff Gordon started his deal last year. You know what I mean? He started, he stayed one here, and then he went on to a real good year. And uh, Labonte's got the same chance. Ern Earnhardt coming down on pit road. This is that stop that they've been talking about. And here it is at lap 391. Morgan Shepard also coming in. to stop again or are they on their way to victory Earnhardt coming back to speed this puts Rudd into third Marlin to fourth Waltrip to fifth and Lake speed up into six Craven getting lapped by Bobby Labonte one car was back in again I wonder if uh, they had a stop and go penalty or something. I don't know I, 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 Mikey, I didn't see it till he went back out so I missed it They just um, gassed and go, and that's just they, they couldn't make it on fuel. If Richard Childers could figure out how to put some more fuel in while they're running, they would have done it. 
Well, the 23-year-old has cast a long shadow over Bobby Labonte. When they ran for Rookie of the Year, Jeff Gordon beat Bobby out. Then two races this year, there's uh, Bobby's wife, Donna, looking on. Two times this year, Bobby Labonte was close. Jeff Gordon took him away. But tonight, right now, unless his brother has a trick up his sleeve, Bobby Labonte is on his way to win number one in the Winston Cup Series here in the 36th running of the Coca-Cola 600. And I tell you, this is the, the race that set Jeff Gordon off right then. But he won this race last year, and um, you know, then it went on to, uh, to win in uh, Indianapolis. You know, a yeah, super good year, right? Right. Well, you see Chuck Bound off the pace here. We had a call on Chuck tonight. It's great to see him back racing after that crash at Pocono, Pennsylvania that uh, put him on the shelf for a year, getting a chance to come out here, qualified well. It looks like they've run that one dry. Yeah, that might be what, what happened. They might have been stretching it as far as they could stretch it. Still racing right here. Ricky Rudd. I tell you what, if you make it with three or four laps to go, you don't even look at them. No, you just run it till it quits, and then you go from there. Right. You don't even you don't even think about it then. And yeah, Earnhardt's not going to give up easy. Rod, Rod and Earnhardt's probably going to race for the rest of the day. But it's a race, other than for track position. Track position count it is because right. Earnhardt is a lap down. Oh, okay. After that pit stop, he didn't get up to speed enough to know that. Speed limit on well, pit the road. Speed limit on pit road is what really, really, really hurts them. Otherwise, they lost about a half a lap or something. It looks like it looks like Red's going to come in. On the other hand, yeah, <laughs> must not have been able to make it. So now the question is: They figure so close, we're down to those final laps. What three to, to go? It must have run out. <laughs> yeah, three laps to go. I, I don't think he'd have come in. Steve Burns down there with the car ten. Ricky Rudd comes in for just a quick splash of gas. Two seconds worth to be exact, with just two laps remaining. W was that a planned stop? They sure must have known he was coming in. Hey, yeah. you know what? You know who gets the uh, award tonight? Those spotters. What a job they have done. They have, they have done a good. It's been a good, clean race all night long. It really has. I'm gonna give that slickest move to somebody. I'm sure put those spotters right up on top. All 42 of them. White flag, flag is down, and this is it. For the money, is there enough fuel left in Joe Gibbs' car number 18 to take Bobby Labonte to victory lane? Four cars out of fuel in these final moments. Sterling Marlin slowing down. He's come out of fuel. He's dropping back, and he's headed on the pit road now. They told him he was running third. You have deja vu. Here comes Gordon. Bobby Labonte for the checkered flag. Checkered flag is down. And the winner of the 1995 Coca-Cola 600 is Bobby Labonte. Waited a long time for this one to come together. The former Grand National star in 1991 is their champion. He's just pulled it off. 13th at Sears Point, the last time out. And he's done it tonight. He's given Joe Gibbs a victory in one of the greatest Winston Cup races of the year, the Coca-Cola 600. Be some celebration in victory lane for Bobby Labonte, who broke his shoulder at Darlington, made the next race at Bristol one time. He's a toughie. Michael Waltrip will get third tonight. Sterling Marlin has to settle for fourth.